Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and today I've got a simple project for you, which is great as a book cover, you can use it as a wallet, you can use it as a handy bag to put your wet wipes and spare nappies in if you're a young mum. Um, and it is very, very easy. Now, if you've seen a previous video that we did, which was the uh, um, fold over pouch bag, it works on the same principle as that. It is essentially a bag that has two inner pockets. So this is your emergency nappy supply bag, or you can just use it as an everyday pouch. There's no zipper linings in it, but once it's closed, if you hold it on the fold, nothing will fall out. You can make it in a tiny scale to keep your cards in. Or what we're going to do today is make it as a journal cover. So if you're into your bullet journaling or you just want, you know, you've got nice books that you want to keep covered, grandma's recipe book needs a new cover on it, something like that. It's very easy. And if you're using an exercise book, it will just slip out of the cover and you can put your new one in. So, first thing you need is a journal or an exercise book. And what I would recommend, I mean, these ones here, these are like the old, the old school exercise books. I don't know about you, but it was so nice getting a new book at school. But the covers are normally quite thin, so I would recommend you reinforce them with a bit of cardboard just to give them some extra stiffness. And then you need to cut yourself a piece of interfacing that is double the size of your cover plus the spine. So if you open your book up, where's the centre? Open your book up, your piece of interfacing fits exactly on the cover. And finger press the middle of the interfacing. You have to finger press it because this is bondable interfacing. If you try and press it with an iron, you'll stick it to itself. We'll get the smallest ironing board in the world. Oh, I'll get that in a minute. You need a piece of patterned fabric that is at least two, cent uh, two centimetres or one inch deeper than your front to, you know, top to bottom than your interfacing, and about oh, three inches or six centimetres longer. Fold that in half as well, and then what I need you to do is line up the centre fold of your interfacing with the centre fold of your fabric, just to make sure that you've got enough excess fabric either side of this. And then just bond that in place, and do it carefully so that you don't get any wrinkles in there. Make sure that when you put your interfacing on your fabric, you've actually put it sticky side down, because it's at this point, if you've done it the wrong way, then it will stick to your iron. Now, no one's ever done that before, have they? No, I've done it frequently. Just gently put it on like that, and then if you flip it over once it's adhered, you can give it a good old rub down to make sure it's completely flat. And at this point, you can actually get rid of that centre fold line that you've put in your fabric. In case you're wondering about the smallest ironing board in the world, this is simply a wooden clipboard that I've covered in tin foil, and then I've put some quilt wadding, and then I've covered it in fabric, and I've just taped it on the back with the loudest tape that you can find. But it's really handy, because I've got a big ironing board, I've got a medium-sized ironing board, I can't be bothered to get either of them out, whereas this just sits at the side of my chair comes out on a regular occasion. So, you have this fabric. What I would recommend that you do is you do trim down this top and bottom seam to about, well, I said a centimetre. You need to give yourself a little bit of give when you make this book jacket, otherwise it's very, very difficult to get it on and off the book. So normally I would use the line of the interfacing as a line, a guideline for my stitching. This time though, I'm just going to sew outside the interfacing. I'm trying very hard to make sure that I push my rotary cutter away from me because it is safer. Never let it be said that I lead you astray by telling you how to do something the wrong way. Oh, I'm going to save them. There'll be another demo soon, what to do with all those odd strips of fabric. Grab yourself a piece of white lining material. 
that is the same size as your top piece. I say the same size, this is nowhere near the same size. I'm going to trim this down in a sec. Just pin along those edges there to hold it in place. While you trim it down. There you go. And then as I say, if you've ever seen our easy reversible fold over clutch bag demonstration, you'll start this project in exactly the same way. And that is by sewing together the short ends of your main fabric and your lining. So straight stitch, five mil seam allowance, Straight down one side, and straight down the other. And then what you need to do is the edge of your interfacing is going to be here on the leading edge of your book cover. So use that as a guideline. Fold your fabric along there. Actually, I'm just going to put a couple of pins in that to keep that folded. And then you're going to sew from this seam line down to the fold. Let's just pin that in place to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But just take care not to go beyond that line of stitching that you've got. If you pop it in your machine, again with a 5mm seam allowance, and I'm using a 5mm because I've actually put a 10mm seam allowance on that interfacing. If you position it, and put your needle in on the stitch line and then to lock it count your stitches forward count them back and then carry on forward so three forward three back so it doesn't encroach on the other bit of fabric and down to the end When you're doing it from this direction it's actually easier because you can see where your seam is Ooh. go down to it and use the uh, flywheel just to get it in there exactly now all things being equal if you take these pins out of here you should be able to create exactly the same fold on the other side of the cover, but on the lining. Because bear in mind on the lining, you don't have any interfacing to guide you. And this is why it's important to measure up your centre line. So you've got an equal amount of fabric at either end. I am taking a chance here because in all honesty I don't know if it's exactly the same. But the principle is right if you don't ruck your stitching up. If you ever find that you, you get that sort of problem when you're starting right at the end of the seam and your material gets pushed down into your feed dogs by your needle, you're better off just ripping the stitches out, starting again a bit further on in the fabric. to 
to that phone line and back. And then start on that seam line, put your needle in, count your stitches forward. Oh, that's four actually. One, two, three, four. Count them back. So you've sewn the cover of one side here and the lining of the other. What you then need to do to complete the book cover is take the interfacing that's on the other side, fold your fabric along the line of the interfacing and pin it. And then again, you sew from that fold to your original seam line without going over the seam line. And then what you should do when you shake it out, hmm, remind me not to talk when I've got pins in my mouth, is you th should then be able to just get this remaining seam like so, just by pulling the fabric taut. Oh. Okay. Don't try and pull your fabric out of the machine while the needle is still in it. Guarantee way of bending your needle. So what you've done now is you have sewn both the lining and the outer, the, the pockets that your cover will go into. So if you flatten this all out and sew again from that original seam all the way down to the next seam here, I'm not describing that very well, but basically you're going to be sewing this edge here now. And do the same on the other side, but remember to leave a gap because you need to turn this the right way around at some point. Leave a gap there. And leave yourself sort of three inches, seven, eight centimetres with which to turn it out. Now you only need to turn out the outer fabric because your lining fabric wants to stay this way round as it is. What you can do though is just clip off the corners to give a cleaner finish. I say a cleaner finish, it gives a cleaner finish to your book cover. It doesn't give a cleaner finish to your living room floor if you're doing this in your living room. because there's odd snippets of fabric everywhere. Ooh. 
So, put your hand inside, grab that corner, pull it through. And then just push out these corners on your outer fabric. Like so. And then the lining just tucks up whoop, inside. Just use your scissors to get right in there. Now you obviously have this open seam here, which I'm just going to top stitch. In fact, I'm not going to top stitch because I need a different colour thread. I'm just going to pin it for a second and just show you on the other example. Because what you can do with something of this size, you can very easily just top stitch along these two straight edges. Ow! edges and also you can get it in the machine quite easily and top stitch those edges for a cleaner finish but we haven't got the time for that today so this one's just going to have a good press and the book will quite simply slip in there And you can cover your book and this is why I say you need to make sure that you just give about a five mil stretch allowance around the outside so that you've got a comfortable fit because if your book jacket is too tight what will happen is your cover will just bend like this so the top stitch version looks like this very neatly finished again with something like this you can top stitch it because you've got enough room there and then we've just put an additional magnetic clasp in there to keep it closed. And as I say, the wallet size, you will have one hell of a job trying to top stitch that. So just give that a good press. Um, if you want, you could perhaps just hand embroider around the edge of it if you want to keep that seam clean. But there you go. The same technique can make at least three different jackets, as it were, or bags. I'm sure you'll find many more uses for this. Um, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I hope you keep journaling if you are journaling and we will see you again next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.